Greg? We are approaching the late former President Richard Nixon's 100th birthday, several high-profile events. Looking back at the president's complicated legacy, Dominic Di Natale is live from Nixon's birthplace in Yorba Linda, California, once a big orange grove. Dominic, how was he commemorated today? There was a very impressive display from the Marines who, as you know, protect uh, the current president, but also protect past presidents as well. There was a flyover of Harrier jets and there was a 21-gun salute. Uh, there was also some very moving speeches from a major general from the Marines and also people from the political sphere as well. Amongst the crowds were his family as well, his two daughters. We spoke to Tricia, his first daughter, who described really how he would view the world in the context today, given the partisanship that we have in Washington and the troubles around the world. This is what she had to say, Greg. I think that he w would look at the, the countries in the world and try to find ways to, to create more positive interaction between countries. And I think he would, would look at the world and he would say, there's still a lot of work to do. He himself was obviously a controversial and complex character. People will be speaking here today say perhaps we didn't really know him, even though the Watergate scandal uh, led to his end and tarnished his reputation as a geopolitical peacemaker. Uh, people here just say that really, uh, at the end of the day, he was a good man and that he really had wanted really quite world peace, quite frankly, which is something of a cliche, but he'd set out really to do that. Um, and that only in his later years, and now 36 years after he resigned, that we actually get a better sense of a historical context of what he achieved, particularly with his foreign policy with the likes of China and Russia, Greg. We certainly know that Watergate uh, was the low water mark for him, a shameful moment in his life and career, but what are people today saying is his legacy? It comes back to the geopolitics. It comes back to the foreign policy. Remember that he reached out to China, and really that reaching out and getting Mao, Chairman to actually decide to open up that country and it become, and as a result of that, it becomes the great power uh, that it is today and also particularly what he did with the Russians. Uh, he you know, started to bring about the end to the Cold War. But many of the things that he did, the geopolitical ideas, for example, pulling troops uh, out, of ta sorry, out, out of Vietnam, very much has parallels with what's going on today. And one of the uh, major generals that we were speaking to today says that what he did in Vietnam were lessons for what we saw or what we're seeing now in Afghanistan. Take a look. And Greg. We're not going to let the effort of the last decade completely collapse behind us. I, I, I think that's a clear lesson that we can take from the Vietnam War, and I suspect that's a significant one as people are working through the plans over the next year or two. And there he's referring to the very sudden pullout of Vietnam that Nixon ordered because the war had become so controversial. Of course, the Afghan war now controversial and people here in the United States voters very tired of it as well. So similar sort of pressures and people very much remembering of what he did back then and really how we can learn from that today, Greg. The quick pullout led to the fall of Saigon. All right, Dominic DiNatale. Dominic, thanks very much. Jimmy? Well, Greg was mentioning before the escape from Alcatraz. What's that all about? The swim from Alcatraz? Well, here it is. More than two dozen people braving the